Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the basic analysis for parallel programming. So let's get out of Excel here and go straight back to Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> You'll see that I have some code here that I've run. Uh, this is basic code for the trapezoidal rule and counting integrals. <clears throat> I have the main function down here, uh, which is going to count but to go and do the evaluation between the intervals of a equals 0 to b equals 160. It's going to split it into this many intervals. And you'll see I have initialized my result. I've set up some variables for the number of threads I'd like to use. I've set up my timer. And I've set the number of threads I want to start with and end with. I've also outputted a header for the results I'm going to use. Here I have loops that are running my experiments. For num threads equals start threads, so basically for 1 to 12 threads, set the number of threads using OpenMP. And then for each combination, run a set of 10 trials, record the time, and output the number of threads, the result, and the elapsed time so that I can verify everything, do this in a comma-separated value format. Now I've already taken this code and run it, and it has resulted in my results.csv file, which is right here. You can see it goes from 1 to 12 threads. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this extra line at the bottom. And for this analysis, I am going to use Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to select all this. I'm going to copy. I'm going to come into Excel. I'm going to paste these values. You'll see that generally this pops up. Oh, match destination formatting. So this is not very happy with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is open Sublime Text, paste it in there, select it all again, copy it again. The problem here is that this thinks it is specially formatted text when all I want is plain text. By pasting it into Sublime and then copying it back out, I will have changed it to regular text. So when I paste this time, you can see all the text in place. I can pick this little icon and say use text import wizard. I'm going to click next. Since I used commas, I'm going to tell it it's comma delimited and not space delimited, and I can just go ahead and finish. You'll now see I have number of threads, result, and time <coughs> in my data. Now what I want to do is you'll see there's 10 trials for each number of threads here. So I want to start a column over here. I'm going to call it num threads as well. And we know we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 threads total. The thing I want to measure in this column is my average time. To do that, I'm going to use an Excel function. I'm going to say average if s. Uh, what this allows me to do is to say, take the average over this range, and I'm going to use the F4 key to lock both my row and my column. Criteria range 1 and criteria 1. So my only criteria here is going to be the number of threads. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I want to lock that as well. And then the criteria I'm matching it is the number of threads. So I'm going to select that there. You'll see very easily, and I can double click on this corner. It populates everything. I can make this look nice add and remove decimal places, and we're in good shape. Now, just to verify my results, I'm going to create another column called results. I'm going to drag this over. You'll see it thinks it's broken. I'm going to fix that real quickly. Oh, it's still averaging over time, though, so I want to move this column over to results. Now I have the right value. You can see the values are the same, so I've now verified my results, and I am in good shape. So I have my number of threads, in my average time. The next metric I want to calculate is speed up. <clears throat> if you remember, speed up is the parallel time divide or the serial time divided by the parallel time. So in my first case, I want to say one the time for one thread divided by the time for one thread. In this case, if I am dividing the serial time, the time for one thread, by the parallel time, that's what I want to do. What this tells me is that I want that G2 to stay the same in my analysis, and I am dragging it down the screen. I am dragging it down rows. Uh, so I want it to be able to move down rows, but I don't want it to be able to move left or right. So I'm going to go put a dollar sign in front of this G to lock that, and then I'm going to drag this down. And let's see if this works. Uh-oh, something happened here. Looks like I locked the wrong value. I think I needed to lock the 2 instead of the G. Let's fix that. There we go. We're going to make it look a little nicer in terms of decimal places. And now I have a nice speed up curve. In addition to this, I am going to measure my efficiency. If you remember, the calculation for efficiency is speed up divided by the number of threads or processors. 
So I can go in here and go ahead and do this. This is typically seen as a percentage. You can either format it with decimal places or as a percent. I generally like to do it as a percent with two decimal places. It looks very nice. Then the last thing we're going to measure is the CARP flat metric to help us deal with scalability. This formula is a little bit fancier. It is one over my speed up minus one over the number of threads or processors. That whole value divided by the value of one minus one over the number of threads or processors. Okay, and as we go down, you'll see here there is no cart flat metric for one thread. Uh, so we can go ahead and we'll just delete that. We'll leave it at zero and you'll see that I have my cart flat metric. Now in order to do analysis, it always helps to graph these. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph my average time. I'm going to go up here, go to insert. I'm going to insert a nice line graph like this. And I now have average time. I want this to look nice. So what I can do is I can say add chart element. I want to add an axis title, primary horizontal. That's going to be num threads. And then I also want to add an, <clears throat> another chart element for my or vertical axis. We are going to call that average time. Fantastic. Now we have one chart. Uh, and now I'm going to take the easy way out. I'd like to chart these other results. So I'm going to copy and paste that chart. I'm going to put it right here. Line these up so it looks nice. I'm going to change the title here. Or I can even do this. I can go to select data you'll see that everything is in that column. What I can do is say, well, hey, that's not what I want. What I actually want is speed up. So we'll say, okay, and what happens? Hey, we get our speed up, and that is a pretty nice looking speed up. That is basically linear speed up. Great work. We wanna do the same thing with efficiency. We can also do it this way, just drag it right over. You'll see our efficiency is actually pretty high. And you'll see we can calculate our cart flat matrix as well. And we have a little bit of variance there, uh, but it's right between 3 and 5%. Now that you have calculated your data, you can go ahead and do any analysis and reasonable analysis you want.